Hello guys and welcome to this video. My name is Asutosh and I'm a developer evangelist at R3. In this video we're going to talk about, well you get that right, we're going to talk about Coda but uh, what's more interesting is we're going to talk about Coda with Docker. So we're going to try to deploy a Coda node using a Docker container. Um, well not exactly, uh, why don't we try to make it more interesting. Let's try to run an entire Coda network using Docker. Uh, so let's create a locally bootstrap Coda network and try to run each of its nodes in separate containers or separate docker containers, right? Well, that sounds interesting. Um, so what are we waiting for? Let's get to work. Okay, so the first thing that we are going to need to do is to create a locally bootstrap network. And to do that, we are going to need the network bootstrapper tool. Well, I'm not going to talk in much details about this tool here in this video but uh, I'll link you guys to this uh, particular documentation uh, which talks in much details about this tool and you could go through this if you want to learn more about this tool uh, but what we are going to do here is uh, we're going to use this tool to create uh, all the network artifacts and the node artifacts so this tool will basically uh, read the information from the node.conf file provided to it and it would create all the network and node artifacts like uh, the signing certificates or uh, the network parameters, uh, the node info files and all these kind of files that is required for the proper functioning of, of a Coda network. So uh, um, what you could do is you could download a copy of this tool from this link here. Um, I'll also give the link uh, in the description like I said and once you have this tool uh, the next thing that you're going to need is the node.conf files. Um, again I'll not be talking in much details I'll leave it to you guys to how to create this file if you have a good enough knowledge of about this file you could just type in the information or you could also utilize the Gradle plugin and the deploy node starts to create these files. But overall, I'll just show you how this file looks like and what are the information that you will be needing. In the perspective of Docker, what you need to change basically, um, your uh, everything remains same, not much changes in these files. But what you need to make sure is you have the correct uh, um, uh, host and ports here in these three fields, the P2P address, the RPC addresses. Now the P2P address is basically um, the addresses where each of these nodes communicate between each other. So the inter-node communication happens at P2P address. Um, if you could see, I'm using the name of uh, the node here. Uh, that's because uh, I'll be using the Docker's default networking, which is the bridge network. And uh, the Docker uses the container names to communicate between containers. Yeah. So that's, that's why it's just the name of the container on um, the on the host field of the p2p address now we'll be using docker compose going forward to create all these uh, different configurations for the nodes um, but uh, for now you just need to understand that uh, you need to make sure that all these nodes and ports are correct now here you would see this is uh, 0000 because i want to communicate uh, to the rpc by a client which i'll be running on my host system now if you uh, you might also be wondering what are these ports are these ports basically are uh, the ports which are exposed by the official um, Coda docker image now conveniently Coda also provides us a, a docker image an officially uh, an official docker image which you could utilize and not have to create our own docker images um, so you could read about more details in this particular documentation which also I'll be uh, sharing with you guys I'll put a link of this page as well in the description of this video well um, so moving forward now uh, you could see the same information here um, in each of these nodes nothing changes other than your legal name and uh, basically your p2p address just there I know we were not even uh, care, uh, caring about putting the information in the security part where which defines the users because we are not really going to log in to the notary using RPC. So, in, so we are just uh, concerned about the legal name and uh, addresses and stuff. Well, that's it about uh, the node.conf. Um, so now we are ready to bootstrap our network. And the way you do it is just by using this command java jar and jar file name and enter. And that should basically create a whole lot of files for you just as you could see here 
Now what it's doing is it's creating all those uh, different files that I talked about. Uh, now you could see it's creating the node info files and if you go inside each of these folders you could see a lot of files getting generated. Right, um, so uh, we'll not really be needing all these files, so I'll also do a cleanup of all these. Um, so once you have all these files generated, uh, we'll just wait for uh, the task to complete. And uh, if you could see, uh, we have four uh, different folders, each of these containing all the all the required artifacts for each of these nodes. Um, so I'll let it complete uh, and uh, I'll pause this video. Uh, basically, it has already completed. So anyways, I'll have to pause this video because I didn't need to do some cleanup. I don't need all these files and it's good to basically have only the files that's required for us. So I'll pause this video here and I'll come back when I do all the cleanup of, of all these files. Okay, uh, so welcome back. And as you could see, the folder now looks a lot more clean. I have deleted all the files that I'll be not using anymore, which includes the node.con files and the network bootstrapper tools as well. Uh, I've deleted the node.con files because all those files would be copied inside each of these nodes. Uh, if you could see, I have also deleted all the files apart from the certificates and the node.con files. Uh, so just go ahead, do that. Um, and I have also created a shared folder uh, which contains the network parameters. Now the network parameter is a file which will be generated inside each of the nodes folder and I have just copied one of them here and deleted the others. They're all the identical, so don't worry which one to copy. Now again, uh, I have two more folders, the code app folders which I created and the node info folder which I created. Um, the code app folder is actually um, the code app which I want to install on the nodes. I'm using the Yo code app from the samples repository and uh, I have a node.info folder which is currently empty uh, that's because uh, as these nodes would come up when I deploy them or then run them they would basically create a node uh, info file and they'll push it inside this folder now this folder is shared which means uh, all of the other nodes will be able to see the node.info of the of each of the nodes that are present in the network which means uh, they all will be able to see each other what that means it serves as a network map for uh, the for the for the network we'll be running inside the docker containers right so i've also created the uh, docker compose file like i said and this will be used to manage all of our containers well i just go inside there and see what's uh, what's there in this particular file so as you know docker containers are managed using docker compose file um, so i have four different containers which i have defined uh, the notary the party a the party b and party c and all of them are uh, quite similar i'll just go through one of them and you would be able to understand what's happening in the others as well well uh, party a um, has an image uh, image is basically the official coda image which i talked about um, that's hosted in docker hub so uh, that image will be pulled in case you do not have it in your system already and then i'm giving a name uh, like i said each of these nodes will be named party a party b party c and notary respectively now the ports are basically uh, the ports which have been exposed in the in the docker image uh, which is published in docker hub so 10201 is the rpc port which i'm forwarding to my host machines 10006 for party a and similarly uh, 10009 for party b and 10012 for party c now these are some docker stuff which uh, uh, you must be aware of and then you would also see two 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 port being forwarded uh, why is that that's because uh, if you look at the party a node.conf I'm also using the SSHD for this particular node while I'm not using that for the other nodes, right? So what I'm doing here is I'm enabling SSH uh, using this configuration and I am listening to 2222 uh, port number. Um, so I would be able to connect to this port using SSH. Right? Uh, so by default, SSH is not enabled on the Coda node and if you want to enable it, that's, that's how you do it. You just put the SSHD option and then it becomes enabled. So I'm just trying, uh, so with this, I will be just trying to demonstrate that you could also SSH to a uh, corner node running on top of containers.
well um so that's uh, it apart from that i have the volumes which i have mounted so i have uh, party is no dot con from the party is folder and then similarly the persistence file which will be the local h2 file which i have mounted and then the logs would be available in this folder similarly we have the code apps which are taken from the shared folder node infos like i talked about uh, should be in the additional node infos file folder which is where your uh, uh, network map cache resides and obviously the network parameters uh, which will be taken from the shared network parameters um, file basically which is right this one over here well that's it um, from the docker compose if you could just uh, uh, scroll down and see the other sections they're just the same the copy of it apart from uh, the change in the folders where their respective uh, artifacts decide well yeah um, so we are all set to run the docker compose file I, I could see I have the docker compose and I have my docker engine running so all I could do is I could say docker compose this app docker compose .yml. you don't really need that option if uh, you just have one file there but I'll put that anyways and the up to bring up all the containers and there you go it will be creating uh, all the file all the docker images and uh, will be bringing that up so i'll just uh, pause for a minute here while my containers come up because that's going to take around uh, a minute or so and once they are up i'll come back welcome back guys and uh, guess what we have been able to run all the four Coda nodes in separate docker containers you could see that we have four different uh, Coda nodes that have come up and we could also verify that using the docker ps command there you go um, we have four containers party a party b party c and notary running right but uh, are they really working are the nodes able to communicate with each other or am i able to connect to each of the these nodes using a client well uh, let's see that so let's use the the Coda node explorer to connect to one of these nodes well, i'll just try to connect to party a and that's 1000 10006 the username will that's 10006 because that's what have been configured in the docker compose file which i showed you and then the usernames are the default one the user one and test like we do for all of our samples and I've been able to connect which means uh, it's working so I'm able to connect to the node from a local machine you could uh, see the network tab is working the transactions there aren't any because we haven't done any I think in the vault uh, just make sure you uh, put the right uh, path here which I have done uh, already before starting the video so um, let's do a transaction and see if it works right your flow and who is the target party B by to an execute uh, will it work it should generally yeah there you go so uh, we could see that party A and party B are able to communicate which means they have been able to do a transaction and we could verify that this particular state is available with party B as well so let me connect to party B local host 1000 10,009 user 1 and test again and yeah we have a transaction and there is also the state available in the vault which means we are able to connect to the node and we're able to transact so that's it uh, we have been able to successfully uh, deploy a uh, locally bootstrap quota network using docker now the last thing that i want to show you guys is to try and connect to the node using ssh like i promised and to do that uh, i'm going to need to use the ssh command uh, i can only connect to party a because that's the only node which is exposing an ssh port the port is 2222 user 1 is the user and the host is localhost is that right okay and l is missing Ah, oh, okay um so i have to disable the host key checking and for that there is this option and that should do it for me the password 
there you go this is right inside the nodes crash shell and that you could verify with all the commands that we have you could get the list of flows you could use the help command to get all the information you could run the vault query but uh, I'm not really sure what's the name of the state is uh, well I'm, I'm just going to leave it uh, right here uh, I just wanted to show you that you could really connect to the node as well using SSH. So that's it for the video today. Um, I think uh, you should have been able to understand how to uh, start a uh, network within Docker containers. And I hope it's going to be a lot useful for you guys when you start developing and deploying your code. Um, thanks for watching and uh, I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.